Hello. Hello, we're going to get started in just a few minutes. I just need to share this out to a couple of places and we will go ahead and get started. So just give me a minute. Grab some water. Okay, I'm back. All right, so make sure I'm sharing out to the places I'm supposed to be sharing out to. Perfect. All right. Hello everybody, how is everybody doing? Hopefully you can hear me now. Let me know in the comments that you can hear me. Sorry, I had to go get some water. We'll be hydrated. No video or no audio. Can you hold on a second? Since so I'm sharing, let's see. Also says that I'm live. Let me share again. It says the stream stop. Maybe because I wasn't saying anything when I restarted. stopped it from all the you hear me on um, okay all right thanks Sheila let me uh, try one more time to go on Facebook live Right. 
was thinking about uh, coming up, so we should get started in just a minute. Okay, it looks like we are live again. All right, so I think, I think we, uh, made it live again on the, um, item. So hopefully we'll get the people to rejoin. All right. And if you are on with me, Zoom, you can see my screen, right? I think I should be broadcasting my screen. Sharing my screen, yep, all right. Can you guys see my screen for those who are on Zoom? Yes, perfect, and you can hear me, right? I think you can hear me too. All right, well, let's get, let's get this, uh, all right. This party started. So if you're on with Facebook, um, let me know that you can hear me. Type it just in case you can. All right, let's just make sure that Sheila, you're on. Can you hear me on Facebook? on Facebook aren't responding, but um, let's give it one more minute and then we'll get uh, started. All right, well, welcome to Facebook Ads Foundation. We are doing a three-part series the month of September where I'm going through, um, we went through last week, we went through Facebook ad strategies, what kind of strategies you can uh, use in your Facebook ads in your travel business. And today what we're going to do is we're gonna go over some strategies on how you can find your audience using Facebook ads targeting. So welcome for those who are on the webinar and also on Facebook Live. I'm so super excited that you are here. This is training is going to take about an hour um, of your time, so I thank you for giving me that hour this afternoon. And with that, let's get started. So today we're going to go over marketing foundations and introduction for marketing just to make sure that we have set the stage and we are all operating from the same vantage point and starting point. And then we're going to talk about what it means for ads targeting, what types of ads targeting there is in Facebook, and then I'm going to go over with you some key strategies that you can use to target your particular audience. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I always like to make sure that the people who are joining me are in the right space. So I want to um, just ask you a couple of questions and let me know, are you frustrated and you want to have some more customers in your travel business? You can reply in chat in Zoom or on Facebook and let me know, does this sound like you? Are you looking to get more consistent customers, consistent revenue in your travel business? Um, let me know in the chat. Are you also a Facebook are you a business owner and you know that Facebook, you've heard about Facebook and you've tried it and maybe it hasn't worked for you. Maybe you've boosted an ad and you didn't get any results or you got some likes but you didn't get any sales. Is that you? Are you wanting to, as a travel business owner, you want to expand your reach, meaning you want to get in front of more people. So 
you know who you want to sell to, but you want to get in front of more of those people on a regular basis without actually having to hit the pavement, meaning you don't want to have to go to any more networking events. You don't want to have to try and be present in all the places that you think that they are. You just want to have some sort of auto magic way to expand your reach um, and get in front of more people. Is that something that you are interested in? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then you are absolutely in the right space tonight. So before we dive in and we go over the particulars of what Facebook targeting is and how we find your tribe, let me tell you a little bit about myself. For many of you, some of you know who I am, some of you may not, so I always like to set the stage and introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner. Um, I am the online travel boss. I am um, an entrepreneur. I guess I could even be considered a serialpreneur. Um, but we officially became entrepreneurs in our family in 2006, where we opened up our first uh, physical business. We have a uh, barbershop in downtown Frisco, still open. I have about 15 plus years of experience, experience helping business owners like you and other business owners launch new product services and actual businesses. I've been a travel business owner for about three years. I'm a certified project manager, and all that really means is that I have a, um, I am a licensed person to help you get your stuff done. So um, I call myself a pimp. It's a, it's a PMP certification. So I am a licensed PMP. Here's my promise. Like I mentioned to you earlier, it's going to take about an hour for us to get through this content and let me um, show you about Facebook ad advertising and give you that introduction. As I mentioned, this is a three-part series and my promise is if you stick through the end of this training, what you'll realize is even with the complexity of Facebook advertising, that if you actually know what you're doing, it doesn't have to be hard. And so I'm going to show you some tricks that will make it so much easier. And the objective of all of the people who join these trainings is so that you can get more visible. I'm going to show you strategies that are going to allow you to get more visible, get more engagement, and ultimately more business, more money into your business by increasing your customer base. So I'm going to just give a little repeat. If you did join me last week, this will be a repeat. If you've been on any of my marketing classes, this will be a little bit of a repeat. But I always want to make sure that we are operating from the same foundation. And so let's talk about what that is. And so some of you have seen these slides before, but let's just remember that there are three customer stages. If you are new to Sunday and you've never seen any of her marketing training, I want you to think of customer stages just as in any relationship, right? When you first meet somebody, they're a stranger, they're not familiar with you as a person, you don't expect a lot from new people that you meet, you just wanna you know, have a casual conversation. And when you're marketing your business, it's the same way. So the important thing for you to get out of this slide is, is that strangers, you do low, to zero selling of your products and services. You want to introduce yourself to a stranger and you do that by offering them a low risk to zero risk type of offer. So you have an offer that will introduce, that will solve a problem or a need that they have. And in exchange, they'll give you contact information so that you can start the relationship. Acquaintances in your businesses are just that. They are familiar with you. Maybe they've been referred to you by another person who's done business with you. Maybe they have opted into a stranger offer that you have and they've either seen another ad or maybe you've done an email sequence and now they're getting to know you. Maybe you have a Facebook group like I do and, they're, and you're posting in the Facebook group and they're starting to join your lives. Those are acquaintances. They are their no, tr no like and trust, which is the KLT factor, is medium to high. So they're warming up to you, right? That relationship is getting a little bit stronger. Um, the a brand awareness relative to who you are and what you do is, is growing. Their willingness to pay you for services and products is growing because they're becoming more familiar with you. You can do some soft selling here. You want to do 
some low entry point types of offers. So having maybe inviting them to a live um, information session, uh, an online webinar, you know, including them in your email series where you're communicating information about services and products. Those are all great things to do at the acquaintance offer. What you do not want to do at the stranger or acquaintance offer is hard sell or offer your big, your big core products, right? You don't want to go in for the kill, offer, you know, your $3,000 Aruba trip to a stranger who has no idea who your travel agency is, who you are as a travel owner. You want to do something that's a little bit softer in terms of introduction. But we all know what BFFs are and we know them um, in our business as well. So those are people who are familiar with you, right? They've seen you in action. Maybe they've even utilized your services in the past and they are prime candidates for your Aruba $3,000 trip, right? Because they're waiting for you to put together that slamming package that you did last year for the, or six months ago. The point is, is that your BFFs are familiar. Their willingness to buy is high. Their awareness of your business is high and their K the KLT factor is high. So oftentimes when people start marketing in their business, they are marketing the wrong offer to the wrong stage. Meaning you may try to do a BFF offer to a stranger and that, be, that stranger is like, I don't know who you are. And they don't, they don't buy, right? Or maybe you are not offering enough to your BFFs, maybe you're just doing soft selling and you're not giving them anything to buy, right? So oftentimes the disconnect in marketing for new business owners is they don't have the right offer and they're not making it to the right client. But if you can get that right, then you've got magic. So let's talk about how we do that. So before we talk about that, let's talk about the process. The process is you want to attract new business um, in, your, in your travel business on a consistent basis. You want to have a process that's going to allow you to attract new leads consistently, right? Or you'll find yourself in the, in, the, in, the, in the situation that a lot of new businesses find themselves in, is that they may have really high points where they've done a lot of work, leg work, maybe you've done a lot of networking, you've gotten your name out there, and then you start working on the business and then you don't have anything that's getting you new business and then it dries up. So once you're finished getting through your pipeline, you don't have any new business coming in. So you want to always have something in play that's consistently attracting either manually, right? You're doing it by your legwork or some automated system to do that. And then once you attract people, the thing that you want to do is make sure that you have a process in place to relate to those people, that you are building those relationships. So it does you no good to get an email list, grow, you know, spend a lot of effort and time growing an email list and then not sending emails out, right? It doesn't do you any good to collect business cards and do nothing with the information. So that R is critical that you have a process by which when you get a contact that you communicate with them, you start relating with them, you start engaging with them. Social media is a great place to do that. Um, email is a great place to do that. You know, networking obviously is a great place to do that. But again, you don't want to attract and not relate. And, you know, if you're doing A&R, and some of us are that way. I know when I first started my business, I was really good at A&R. I'm a people person, can talk to anybody, and building relationships is just the thing that I love to do. Um, but I was really scared to ask for the sale. So if you're not asking for the sale effectively, you're just sort of getting, you know, new friends in your life. Um, and you've got a hobby. You don't have a business. Business owners sell, right? So you've got to get good at the C part of your business, which is convert. You've got to take those relationships and you've got to extend offers to them so that they can ultimately become buying customers, right? So the art process is important that you know. What I mentioned earlier is, is that oftentimes what new business owners or even, you know, people who have been doing this for a couple of months is that they've got an offer, but they're not offering it to the right customer at the right time with the right messaging. So it's really critical that you get super good at being able to attract, relate, and convert your offers, multiple offers, at the right time. 
Okay, so now that you know that you've got to attract, you know that you've got to relate, you know that you've got to extend an offer, uh, let's talk about what we're going to do with that, right? And so let's talk about Facebook ads. So if you were on last week's class, you learned all about why I think Facebook ads is the cat's meow, right? If you missed that, you're going to want to, you know, uh, sign up for the foundation so you can get an, um, access to that replay. But I'm going to give you just a quick synopsis. Really, the reason why Facebook is the cat's meow is because your customer is on Facebook. However, you can't just jump in what well, you can, but it's not going to be beneficial to you. Jumping into Facebook advertising is not an easy endeavor and for you to be successful. So that's what this series is about. So this part two series is assuming that you've made the decision to do Facebook ads. And now what we're going to do is talk about the three major elements of Facebook ads which is last week we talked about the campaign. We talked about different strategies that you can run or have in order to, you know, decide to do a Facebook ad. The second thing is, is once you've decided to do a Facebook ad, and let's say you're going to do a stranger offer and simply put a stranger offer is you, let's say, I'm going to use TT because I know she's out there. She's got this amazing quiz that she's created that, allows somebody to answer some questions and that questions will, the answers to those questions will reveal the type of traveler that they are. She would create an ad, a Facebook ad, and she would do this first decision point, which is she would decide who the ad should be delivered to. And that's called Facebook audience targeting. And that's the second level or the second decision or setup point that you do in your Facebook ads is you're going to select the type of campaign that you want and then you start to set up your ad set. This is where you do your budgeting. This is where you do your uh, uh, delivery, like where and how you're going to deliver it. Are you going to deliver on desktop, mobile? How much money do you want to spend per day? It also is where you set up your target audience. So we're going to talk about that. And then the third level of Facebook, which is what we're going to talk about, um, we're actually going to go into ad types next week. Um, the, the, this third level, we actually go into in, inside of No Newbie Left Behind, the class in terms of setting up the ad, which is the ad copy, the imagery, and you know how many do you do, and all of that. We go over that actually inside of the class. So next week we're going to be going over ad types because there is about 15 different ad types that Facebook has. And we're going to be talking about the best Facebook ad types for you to be running in your travel business. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to just post them inside of Facebook or in the chat and I will do my best to answer them as we go or you can also save them for the end. Okay, so let's talk about um, audience types. There's three types of core audience types that you have. And so, you know, I, you know, I love this stuff. Like this is, this is the thing that gets me going, right? I love all this sort of techno mumbo jumbo. I love putting all these little pieces together and making it happen. But this may not be your thing, right? This may not be your superpower. This may be the last thing on earth that you want to be thinking about. But I'm going to talk about each one of these three things. I'm going to talk about why they're important and what part of your business should be uh, capturing and utilizing these things in your, every, uh, in your everyday sort of business uh, going on. All right, so three types of Facebook ad types, audience types that are available for advertisers. Uh, the first one is core audience. The second one is custom audience. And the most powerful one is lookalike audience. So let's talk about each one of those. All right, core audience is your existing audience. So the, that is people who are already, you either have their phone numbers or you already have their emails, right? So Facebook allows you to connect with them on Facebook by utilizing those two pieces of information. So if you have a list of people and it has their email address or their audience, Facebook will take that list, match it up against its list, to get a match and you can advertise directly to them. You can create ads directly against your core audience. Um, so if you don't have a process by which you are capturing emails, 
email address or phone numbers, you may want to do that um, and uh, ensure that you are capturing that information because all you have to do is simply load the information into Facebook and Facebook will allow you to um, advertise to them. So that's a pretty powerful tool in and of itself. So who is this for? Obviously this is for your acquaintances and BFFs, right? So if you have a, a set of people that you already relate to or who would be interested, you want to compile that list and there's a way for you to load that list and create that, that core audience for yourself. The types of ads that you're going to want to run is obviously retargeting ads, um, you know, acquaintance ads, invite them to an event that you have, invite them to a live information session, a you know, physical one that you may be having locally. You may want to do an online event. You may invite a, a vendor and host a joint event with your vendor to talk about a location. Either way, you can run ads directly to them. Now, these, uh, this is usually a smaller set of audience, but the no like and trust factor is pretty high, right? So it's likelihood, the likelihood of them clicking and taking advantage of your offer is higher. The ads are, is more, are more expensive because the, the delivery is smaller, but the ads are smaller, but the likelihood of you converting is higher. All right, so how do you do that? You just need to have a customer list and you need to have web traffic. So if you have a website and you install your Facebook pixel on that website, you can track that traffic and you can um, you know, retarget ads to that. Let me give you a real life example of what that looks like. If you've ever gone to a website, and I'll use this as an example, I had um, a car situation last week, went to Michelin Tire, let's say, right? Went to Michelin Tire website, and then I go into Facebook and Michelin Tire starts running ads to me, right? Immediately, like, like literally, I've never seen a Michelin Tire ad, and it starts running an ad to me they are doing that through retargeting. So anyone who hits their website, they're gonna start offering stranger offer ads to them to start getting people engaged immediately. You have the power to do the very same thing. All right, so it looks like this didn't change. So I'm gonna kind of uh, skip to this one and we'll go back to the next slide. So the next type of audience or targeting that you can do is custom audience. And that custom audience is where you actually manually are putting together criteria about your customer based on your understanding of your target audience and creating a custom audience. And you're going to do that by understanding who your ideal client is, right? So you need to know who your client is. What are they like? Where are they getting their information? What kind of sites are they akin to? What are their challenges and pain points, objections and roles, purchasing behavior, all of that, right? So if any of you have taken any of my courses, you've taken business foundations, you know that we, we spend a lot of time on the front end of that process defining who your ideal client is. If you've jumped in this business and you don't know who your ideal client, don't start doing Facebook ads. It's going to waste your time. It's going to waste your money because the, 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 um, the results are in your ability to understand who it is that you want to identify uh, and market to. You want to know who that person is. You want to know what she looks like, talks like, is concerned about, because when you're writing and creating your ad copy, that's going to be speaking directly to them. So um, I'm not going to spend too much time there because it's really important that you know that. This custom audience is just a snapshot of what Facebook looks like in terms of what you can, um, how you build it out. So some of the elements that you do here is you can do it by location, you can do it by age range, you can do it by sex, languages, and then there's even more criteria that you can select when you um, actually get in the back end of Facebook in terms of selecting that custom audience. And today we're going to talk about some strategies for you to think about when uh, thinking about how you put together these people. So 
I'm going to ask a question. Do you guys know who your uh, Do you know who your target audience is? Just give me a yes or a no. And if you don't know who your target audience is, then I will um, give you some resources uh, at the end of this as to how you can start to build that out. All right. Let me jump back to this last page because I wanted to talk about who this is for. So. You want custom audiences for when you first start doing Facebook ads. So let's say you don't have a list. You don't, um, you don't know, you don't have a list of people, right? You're starting from um, scratch and you don't know, you, you don't have anybody on your list, right? You're just starting in the business. Maybe you've got a few friends who have purchased and you want to start building out your list then you you know, this type of audience building is what you're going to want to do. This is how you get your feet wet in the Facebook advertising is you build this custom audience, you know, inside of the, and no newbie left behind program together. What we do is we build, you know, I tell you what you need to do to build that audience. Sorry about that. Um, tell you what to do to build that audience. We craft your offer so that they're going to think it's a juicy offer. They're going to click on it and you're going to start to build your list. So obviously this is great for you when you're talking to strangers, right? If you don't have an email list, doing Facebook ads to build your email list of people that you qualify, this process works. And this is what we talked about last week as a strategy is creating a stranger offer where you have a piece of information that your target audience will be interested in and in exchange they will give you their email address and then you start nurturing them through that right so it's for strangers i mean literally you can build a custom campaign for you know any other type of offer but it's best when you're trying to communicate new to strangers and you're creating new different types of offers you want to attract a new source of customers. So let's say, for example, you have, I'll use uh, TT's example again. She specializes in, um, she spe specializes in adventure travel. Her quiz, the results of her quiz, I think, TT, you'll have to let me know in the comments. I think it's four types of results you return, right? Um, the adventure traveler, I don't remember the other three but I'm gonna make it up just from an example perspective. Let's say she is identifying someone as an adventure travel, a leisure travel, you know, maybe um, a luxury travel and you know, some other category, right? Based on the results of that, she could then run subsequent ads to those four different types and create specialized, um, specialized uh, offers like, you know, maybe a guide for the um, adventure traveler, maybe, you know, the top five luxury resorts that, you know, you need to add to your bucket list for the luxury, right? And target those people. So anytime you want to develop a new source of customer, let's say you've spent most of your time focusing on family travel, and now you want to go into you know, maybe the LGBT community and you want to start focusing on that, right? And you've not done that before, right? You can then create a new custom audience for that audience, right? So again, the sky's the limit. We're going to talk about some offer offers. All right. So TT says she's got adventure travel, cultural travel, eco travel, and savvy travel, right? So those are the results of her quiz. She could then, you know, start to create custom audience in all four of those buckets and then create separate ads for all four of those buckets. All right, um, how do you do this? Well, simply put, you gotta know who your customer is. You, you, you cannot skip the market research, you cannot in culinary, so gastro, gastronaut, whatever the stomach thing is called, right? So uh, there you go. So she could try and specialize, I mean, create special custom audiences for each one of those types of groupings um, and start to really segment who she goes after and creates specific offers for them. You got to know who your customer is. You cannot skip the market research. You cannot, you can jump in and just try and figure it out, but it's going to cost you more in testing and dollars trying to test it out. If you don't have some characteristics already identified about your audience. Um, um, and then the tools that you want to make sure that you have that you're using to help you do this is your avatar definition. Um, there is a tool that Facebook has called Facebook Audience Insights. 
Um, and then just good old fashioned market research. So many of you are in my business foundations class. And so you know what I'm talking about. So if you skipped module um, two and one, you want to go back to module one and two, I am telling you, do not jump into Facebook ads, not understanding your target audience. I, I mean, if you walk out of this month, saying anything, I want you to say two things. Facebook ads work because Sunday says so, and don't start them if you don't know your audience, right? Because you're going to waste your time and you're going to waste your money. So if you're in those stages and you don't know, you don't know how to do market research, reach out to me and I can give you some, point you to some of the classes where I point you on how to do that. All right. So let's talk about the, the last type of audience that is like, like, you know, this is the reason why I love Zuckerberg. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I mean, if you guys have heard me, you guys know how much I love him. Like, he is my BFF in my head, right? Like, I really wish he was my BFF in person, but this guy is genius in terms of what he's created because there is no tool on the face of the planet right now that allows us small business owners just out of the, you know, just decided to start a business that gives us this type of power like this particular audience does. So you learn how to do Facebook ads. I'm going to teach you how to do it right. And you're trucking along after a couple of weeks or months and you, you've built your custom audience and you've got traffic going to that audience, right? Facebook's collecting all that data. They're collecting everybody, you know, as long as you set it up right, Facebook's going to collect all of the people that hit your site. He's going to collect all sorts of information. I don't know what he collects because, you know, I'm not, unfortunately, I don't know the secret sauce as to how he does it, but I know that he does it. And what he gives you the ability to do is take the information about the people that have come to your site, have done the actions that you want, and allows you to create a lookalike pool of people in the Facebook that will mimic the same thing that those people did. Now that's a mouthful. So, so, so I'm going to say it again. What you have the ability to do is, is if you run an ad and your ad is to get people to give you their email address in exchange for a piece of information, you know, I teach you how to track that and how to capture that. And effectively every person that has ever given you an email to that ad, Facebook allows you to create a replica and put together in a pool of an audience of people who are most likely to do the same action based on the characteristics of those people. Like you probably are not, you probably don't have goosebumps like I do, but every time I say that I get goosebumps and let me tell you why, because Facebook has all this data about all these people. So if you got, you know, some girl in Jersey who likes potatoes and she clicks on, you know, this particular page and she likes all that, you don't, you may not know all that about her, right? But she like, she clicked on your stuff. Facebook knows if there's 50 more people just like her and he, he being Zuckerberg will allow you to put that in an audience and then you can start running ads against that lookalike audience um, of people. Those ads are cheaper than the custom audience that you did because Facebook already knows their behavior and he's going to deliver and they're more likely to click than even your custom audience does. So you're probably not wowed by that yet because you don't know, but just trust me when I say, the ability to create this lookalike audience allows you to get even more powerful ad results in the future based on the work that you do today. All right, so I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to drink some water, let you guys not canoodle that over. Let me know if you have any questions about what we've gone over, because now what we're going to do is talk about some different ways you can take all of the data that's available to Facebook and you um, and and utilize that in uh, in strategies when you're building up your custom audiences because really the focus is your custom audiences that's where people struggle the most and that's where you are going to find and discover your tribe is through your creation of custom audience so we're going to talk about some strategies about that all right Jerry says that she's wowed I'm glad Jerry that you're wowed because I still 
after doing this for almost 10 years, I'm still wowed by it because it really is pretty phenomenal. I mean, he collects so much data and, you know, I know that there's camps in the government who don't like it, blah, 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 blah. So as long as Facebook allows us access to it and he's not charging us thousands and thousands of dollars for that access, I'm going to keep loving it, right? Because that makes me, Sunday Gardener, some, some, you know, some lady in Frisco, Texas, the ability to find you, Jerry Smith, the ability to find T.T. Harrison, right? All of you ladies were discovered because I wrote a Facebook ad that spoke to you, and now you are part of my tribe, right? That, to me, is powerful. I didn't meet you out on the street. You didn't know anything about me, and now you're on a webinar because you met me, right? Through some click that you did, that's powerful. And so I'm a very busy person, as you are, right? You probably got a full-time job. Maybe you've got kids, you've got family, right? Going to networking events. I mean, there's been a time in, you know, the last six months, I hadn't even left my house. Um, I mean, I left my house, don't get me wrong, I'm not a recluse, but I, I hadn't gone to a networking event in like over a year, right? I mean, I since have, you know, stopped that and started to get out of the house and actually get dressed up and let people meet me. But the point is, is that I wasn't doing that and I was still able to attract new people into my business, right? So I'm, you know, I'm running a barbershop. I'm running my online coaching business. I'm deep, you know, I still sell travel, right? And I, and I consult on the side, right? And I've got one-on-one -on -one clients, right? So my time is finite, as is all of y'all's time. Many of you guys are still working full-time jobs. Many of you guys are doing this part-time and are trying to grow this business part-time, right? So to be able to have the power of Facebook ads at your ability, right, by just simply learning how to do it and being able to run it and attract people is a powerful tool that Zuckerberg has given us, right? So be wowed by that. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about strategy number one. I never took my simple water, so hold on. It's more like a gulp of water. All right, so... Strategy number one is purchasing behavior. And um, what I want you to know is this is a really powerful, powerful way to target people. Let's say um, I'm going to go back to Titi's um, example. She's got adventure traveler. And I think inside of her adventure traveler are golfers, right? Let's just, let's pick that as an example. Let's say her adventure traveler is a golfer. Purchasing behavior allows you to target people based on what they purchased in the last period of time, 30, 90, whatever the time period that it allows you to do, right? So TT could target people who shop at whatever the most popular expensive golf golfing company for irons are. Like, I don't know anything about that. But if TT is targeting golf people, she better know about that, right? So she could target people who have purchased golf equipment, right? Or people who have purchased golf attire or people who have been to a golf resort, right? If that information is available. Now, I don't know specifically golf, right? But if, if she wanted to put together a golf retreat in the future, or she wanted to get in front of golfers, she could, right? She's got culinary on her, she's got eco-traveler. I don't know what an eco-traveler is. I guess I should, but I don't know what an eco-traveler is. I don't know what a savvy traveler is, but TT knows what those people are. And they may have a specific buying, buying patterns that she can target on. So I think of luxury travel, right? So somebody who travels at, who bought, who's bought something from Gucci in the last, 90 days, right? That, that might be your target audience. I don't know. My point is, is that you, the, the, be, the purchasing behavior of people is targetable, if that makes sense, right? So what they eat, I told you guys last week that if somebody likes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and they identify themselves as a peanut butter and jelly lover, we can find them, right? If they love, um, if they love a particular type of makeup, 
and that's important to your travel customer, you can find them, right? If they're buying from a particular brand, if they are do-it-themselves, right? So, I mean, we don't have the market for that, but their profile in terms of do they do their own stuff themselves, you can find them, right? You may want to know that kind of stuff. I have actually, one of the things that I have available inside of the class is a list of all of the different types of things that you can target by. Purchasing behavior is one of them, right? So let me know if you guys have any questions on that, but I just wanted to tell you how powerful that is. Literally, if somebody has bought something or done something or you know they've spent money in a certain way, they purchased a house, right? That's something that's targetable. If they purchased a car, if they, I mean, just any type of purchasing that's targetable in um, Facebook, right? So again, another powerful piece of information. All of this data is collected, right? It's kind of scary, but again, as long as it's available to us, you should use it. <laughs> like use the, use the information for, uh, you know, attracting more people into your business. So let's talk about targeting strategy number two. Before I go there, does anyone have any questions on the, the purchasing behavior? Because um, I think that one's pretty straightforward. Like that's not complex at all, right? If you know where your customers are shopping, what they're looking to buy or in the market to buy, right? I mean, I think it may be a pretty good thing to target people who have just purchased a house, right? Six months ago, because then you know they're not saving for a house and then their funds could be freer to, to travel, right? That may be something that's important to you. Again, you got to know your customer and know what they're doing or potentially things that they want to do. Um, and then that's going to be something that you can, you can do. Let's say maybe you want to partner with a real estate agent, right? You could find people who sell houses um, on Facebook. All right, strategy. Number two, this is a great one too for our industry because life events, right? So people who are about to get married, <laughs> engaged, you literally can find people on Facebook who, have, who are about to get married in a certain period of time. It, and, and so I, I know you guys can see the use case here. If you specialize in destination weddings, right? Wouldn't it be great to be able to get in front of a bunch of engaged people? Right. I mean, that's pretty powerful. If you uh, specialize in um, celebration, Andrea is on and she sell, she specializes in celebration um, travel where she, you know, focuses on, you know, travel in the around the specific celebratory events. Right. So anniversaries are great. Um, you know, marriage anniversaries, work anniversaries, maybe retirement parties, family reunions, all of that kind of stuff. So anniversaries, new jobs, purchased homes, major, just had children, you know, maybe, I, I don't know about college graduations, but I don't know if that is one of the life events, but life events are an item that's trackable or targetable in Facebook. And you can do them in these increments. So three, six, and nine months, uh, not nine months, three, six, and 12 month increments um, in terms of when the event is happened, going to happen, or has happened already. All right. Um, all right. So Andrea says that she's working on a breast cancer survivor, survivor annual trip. Right, and I don't know when that is, but let's say that that's gonna be in the fall of next year, right? She can be building up her audience right now and she can target breast cancer, people who are associated with breast cancer um, in some way. And because that is such a strong following and a strong cause, many people identify themselves as breast cancer survivors, um, affiliated with uh, nonprofits, Right, so you can target people who are affiliated with the nonprofits. Um, you can uh, target people who are affiliated, um, who have, who designate themselves as survivors. There's all different types of ways that you can take that particular use case. So Andrea says that her event is October 2020 of next year. So right now she could be building up her 
her email list and her her tribe of people that potentially would be interested in this product um, right now to start selling to them, you know, maybe in the beginning of the year, right? So it's September now. She could spend the next six to eight weeks building up a list, right? Nurturing that list and then offer the package right in, you know, October, November, December of the year, get them on the payments to get them into that on October 20th. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of what, what the power is that you can do. She's already got this event that she's doing in next year. Payments are probably not due until what, June? June or May, right? Final payments for this trip is not due. To, so you've got plenty of time to start to build up an audience of strangers now, um, build it up, build the relationship, and then extend the offer like about two months after you build up that particular audience. All right. Strategy number three is layering. So now you know somebody who, you know, is uh, they 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 purchase somewhere and they have a life event. So maybe you know somebody who loves Gucci whose anniversary is coming up. And, you know, you do a, a Gucci-inspired campaign um, about, you know, travel, right? I don't know how you connect the two, but I'm just giving you an example, right? Is, is you know that if they're buying Gucci, you know that they're probably a high-end investor uh, because Gucci's not cheap. Or, you know, pick another Louis Vuitton or whatever. I am so not a name brand person, so I don't know what all the name brands are. But let's say that's your market. Maybe there's a particular... Um, you know, club that these people belong to. Maybe they're, you know, I think of in my area, there is um, a lake and people who own boats, right, in the lake are probably more apt to go on a particular type of trip. Or maybe I want to target them so they can go to, you know, experience sailing or boating in some exotic place that they've never done, right? Those are the types of things. So you can take all of these different types of targeting strategies layer them on top of each other to then create characteristics. Power Facebook targeting allows you to do like, you know, find me somebody who's between the ages of 24, uh, 25 and 34, right? And then, you know, I want them to make over $150,000. I want them to be college educated. I want them to have two kids who are in the ages of, you know, who are in high school, right? That's what layering does. It allows you to do all of those and statements or or statements on top of it to create a custom audience. All right, that's a lot. That's a mouthful, right? And so, you know, it's it's my hope that you you kind of see the power of what you can do with the with the targeting. I mean, that's just a couple of examples of what you can do with Facebook targeting. The amount of data that is available to you is, is near infinite. Like, I mean, you could not even begin to exhaust all of the data points that are available to you. And, 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 and somewhat, if you don't know what you're doing, it's a bit overwhelming. And so what we really want to do is develop some strategies around what your travel niche is to build out how and who you can target to be able to do that. That's what we do inside of the class. All right, so in summary, let's talk about what we've, what we've gone over today. So I, I, I kind of just kind of peeled the onion back just a little bit to show you that you can, you can get some really powerful results out of Facebook ads targeting meaning you can identify some really finite pieces of information about your target audience. You can, um, you want to make sure that you're going after, you know, some very specific targeting types. Like for example, age is a very important, because if you don't segment by age, you could be bringing in young, you know, millennials to retired people, right? But if your target audience is retired people, you want to do age. So age, basic demographics is really important. Those are critical points. Um, we also talked to you about the, the success that you have. The more finite that you can get your target audience, the more successful that you, can, you will be with your ads. So I think in last week's class, 
somebody asks, should I go broad or should I go narrow? My answer is always going to be narrow. Um, if you're going to ask me, should you niche or should you not, I'm going to always say you should pick a travel niche, right? Because a jack of all trades is really a, what is that? An expert of none. I can't remember what the saying goes. I'm so bad at like euphemisms. Like I never remember like the full term, but like the point is, is that the more specific you can get in terms of who you want to target, the more success you're going to get, the more money you're going to make in this business, the more sales that you're going to have. Now, there'll be people that will argue me till the, you know, until they're blue in the face because you can't convince me of anything other because I've seen too much success in the specification of your targeting, your marketing, your products and services to sell me anything else. But there'll be people that will tell you who don't know really, you know, the, the, anything about marketing will tell you, no, just sell to as many people as you can, right? And that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be all over the place trying to get certified in all these different types of travel. You're going to be trying to sell to everybody and their mother. You're going to be running ads so the, the, the cows come home, spending hundreds and thousands of dollars, getting very little conversions, right? So don't waste your time and money, right? You want to be specific. You want to know who your audience is specifically, and you want to narrow down that audience specifically. And so that's what I showed you today. I showed you how to do that in types of, I'm sorry, in targeting. Last week, we talked about the different types of ads, campaigns that you can run to, font, to get in front of people, your strangers, your acquaintances, and your BFFs. We've talked now about the different types. Next week, we're going to, I keep saying types. This week, today, we talked about targeting. Next week, we're going to talk about ad types because out of the 15, 20, I think there's 20 now of different ad types, we're going to hone in on the specific ad types that you need to focus on so that you can be successful. All right, so you guys know we've got a course coming up. Okay, so I completely messed up. So let me skip down here. I, uh, messed this up, but didn't, didn't, um, all right, let me reshare this again. So sorry about that. All right. So hopefully you guys can see the screen again. All right. So the question that you probably are asking is, well, how do I do this for my business? Well, you know, is she going to tell me how I can do this? You know, we didn't go over how to do this, right? I didn't, she didn't tell me, she didn't show me the back end of Facebook ads, right? I, I can't do that in an hour. If I'm going to really commit to being here an hour and I always go over, right? Cause I always have some sort of technical difficulties or whatever. I'm pretty verbose, but the point is, is you can do this for your business. You can do this for your travel business. You can spend less time trying to figure this out. Um, Facebook, even though it's a powerful tool, there, it is complex if you just jump in there and you try and go into the back end of it. You can piece together an ad and release it. Facebook will let you do that. It does not require you to be certified or know what you're doing. You can launch an ad, Zuckerberg and all his little minions will approve it and you will waste money if you do not know what you're doing, right? So is it possible for you to learn Facebook ads and get results? And the answer is absolutely it is. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn how to do that, right? So you've got some choices that you need to make, right? You can take this information and let's just talk a little bit about why I do this, right? I do this, I do the introduction because Facebook ads is not for everybody. And I learned this early on. Jumping into Facebook advertising, although it's sexy in terms of the ability to get these results, it's not for everybody. Some people don't like to mess with the details. They just want to outsource it. And that perfectly is a way for you to go, right? You can just say, you know what, she's already talked over my head. I'm not interested in this and I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, right? That's one of your options as well, right? You know, your second option is, is that you can just say, you know what, Sunday, I appreciate your time. Thanks for the information. I'm going to come on the third class and I'm going to go and I'm going to figure out this on my own. That's your option as well. I started Facebook ads 2010 
when there were not as many options as they were as there are now right there it was not as complex as it was and i still had to learn a lot from that point so from 2010 to 2019 about to be 20 10 years almost later right facebook is a beast now in terms of its um its uh, abilities in terms of what you need to choose and select and the options and blah 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 that you need to do right it has created tools so big marketing players like coca-cola mcdonald's big brands can use it to get their ads done right so it spent me years to get to the space that I am. I still do Facebook training um, and advanced training. I still am learning what it is. I've spent thousands, and I'm not kidding you, thousands of dollars. And I'm not even saying since 2010. I think I started really tracking it in 2016. And if I look at how much money I've spent in Facebook ads, being able to hone my audience and being able to do that, it's, it's in the thousands, multiple thousands of dollars, lots of trial and error. So it can be done. I'm not saying it can't be done, but if you're going to jump in there and do it, just be prepared for the time and the money to do that. All right. You know, obviously I've got a class for you guys, right? I've created a way for you to quickly jump over those hurdles, learn from what I've learned, learn from the expertise that I continue to get in my own training. Um, and you can invest in yourself and invest in a way for you to do that. We're going to be doing a very specific ad campaign for you to attract people in your business. So, you know, I, I always tell you guys, I'm interested in action takers. If you want to sit on the fence, you want to talk to me about, well, maybe later, you know, this is not, this class is not for you. I am doing it. I only do this class live once a year and it's usually around this time of year. So I usually do it in the fall. The last time I did this, I don't even think I offered Facebook ads class last year. I think I offered it at the beginning of the year. Um, and, and then I did offer it again. So it's been about 18 months since I've done this class um, again. So this is the time to take action. If you have a niche and you are ready to dive deeper into your, um, your ideal client, then you're going to want to sign up for No Newbie Left Behind, right? So I call you newbies because that's what you are in the Facebook space. This class, this time around, I do offer this class as a self-study class. This is the first time that I'm offering it to travel agents, um, travel professionals. So the class is going to be geared towards our industry, specifically use cases and really focusing on creating those um, uh, case studies or campaigns for travel professionals. Um, and so, uh, Jerry, I'm going to reserve that question to the end. Let's talk about what's included in the class. You're going to get five modules. It's going to be a five-week class as you can imagine. So we're going to go five weeks and we're going to do five modules. Let me talk to you about what's inside of those. The first is we're going to talk about customer and targeting. So you do need to have some background into understanding who your target audience is. But what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time on how to build out your custom audience inside of the tool. Um, and then we're going to go into the particulars of uh, creating your ad, right? So how do you get to that third level? How do you get, you know, what does your copy need to say? What is your title, your headlines, the images? Do you do videos? What are all the little things that you've got to check in order to get that ad approved by Facebook and ultimately launched, right? How long do you let the ad run untouched? And then how do you interpret the results is really module three. So you're going to let the ad run. You're going to be sweating in your armpits. You're going to be like, have I done the right thing? Oh my God, I want to stop it. I want to touch it. I want to change this, right? We're going to shy away from that and we're going to let it run and we're going to interpret the results and make and do action based on the results that we see. Module four is going to be over some advanced techniques um, in terms of how you tweak and optimize those ads so that you're getting the results that you want. And then we're going to do some follow-up and we're going to talk about how do you take those leads that you get and make sure that you're closing the sale and you're ultimately converting. All right. So um, bonus one, because you know I like bonuses, is that, you know, I did this at the beginning of this year. It's the first year that I've done this, but we are going to have study hall sessions. And so what that means is I will do live classes uh, one day a week and then 
in that same week subsequently we will have a two hour uh, study hall doesn't mean you have to participate but I make myself available another time during that same week for two hours of which you can then bring your questions your issues and we resolve them live in person during that two hour period so that's called a study hall um, and you can use that time you can join me for the two hours but I'm there two hours there to help support you through the coursework or any questions or the setup or whatever you want you can join the webinar, show me your content live. Um, I did that for Travelpreneur, and those who joined Travelpreneur, um, all of them said that the study hall time was invaluable and helpful, and particularly when you're doing Facebook ads, having that extra time once you listen to the class, so maybe you don't get the chance to join me live, you listen to it the next day, and then you're trying to do it and you didn't get it, you can join study hall and get that done. So we'll have four sessions of study hall available as bonus number one. And then the other thing is, is that we will uh, be in a specialized Facebook group um, and it's called the um, Marketing Lab. And my previous Facebook ad students um, are still in that class, but you get to join that group. And again, another level of support. So if you have a question that you need to ask and you need that support. So for those who are at TAU uh, and are a member there, it's similar to that. You can come inside, ask me any question about your Facebook ad. I'll answer the question and you'll be able to get that support in there as well. All right, so what do you get with the program? You're going to get the actual program, which will include the five modules. That will include the live training that I will do. It will include the two bonuses that we've talked about. You'll get access to the course. Um, you get lifetime access to the course. So, you know, let's say you do your Facebook ad, you get through it, and then you want to run it again. You want to, you know, remember all of it because, you know, I like to think of myself as a, you know, an Einstein and working right. I don't keep useless information in my head, right? I want to be able to refer to it later, so you can refer to it. You don't have to memorize every single thing that I say in the class you'll be able to refer to it again, and you'll just be able to reuse it and reuse it and reuse it over and over again. Um, the course is worth $5,900 based on the live instruction that I give you, plus the uh, two bonuses. And I normally sell this class for $997. So when I, the last time I offered it back at the beginning of last year, it's $997. Did payments for $997, but since, you know, I love you guys, and I'm offering it new for Travelpreneurs. It's the first time we're going to be doing it just for the travel community. I'm doing it for $4.97. I will not do it for this price when I offer it again next year. Um, so I'm giving you a payment plan, three payments of $180.54, um, and that's a $500 savings. So, um, you know, that's what I got. One of the questions that were asked was, is this class included in the academy? And so for those of you who are not TAU members, uh, which is Travel Agents United membership, um, it is not included in the class because this is a five week dedicated program. I've already discounted this program. You guys get a discount, but I've already discounted this program over 50%. So um, what you do get being a TAU member is beyond the, the period of time that I'm supporting the class. As long as you are a member, obviously, I will continue to support. We've got group, uh, group training um, that we do once a month. You have your TAU membership, so you're going to be able to get post-class support beyond the actual No Newbie Left Behind class as a member. So, uh, Jerry, let me know if that answers your question. Um, simply put, this is one of a kind. I designed this class to help people develop, and so let me, let me even give you a little bit more of an insight of what this class is. What do you get at the end of the class? You're going to have a stranger offer sales funnel, which means you will have an offer that you surface up to strangers and they will click on it and they will give you your email. So that will be all done in an automated fashion. So you run your ad, People will click on your ad, give you an email address, and you will begin to start the relationship, right? So for those people who answered in the poll that we did, this, what would 10 to 15 new leads a day do for your travel business? This is what we would be setting up. Um, 
how long, so one of the questions that is asked is how long do we have to sign up at this rate for the payment plan? So the class starts October 2nd. So the cart's going to end, I think, the 27th, which is that Friday before. So we start on um, that Monday. That's when all the course material and everything introduction will start that week up. So you'll have until the 27th, which is next Friday, to sign up for the payment plan. So the first payment would be 180.54, and then one month after that for the next three months will be um, the 180.54. So you have until next Friday. Um, and so I'm gonna throw in a bonus, an extra bonus for those people who sign up in the next 24 hours is I will also throw in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me if you sign up in the next 24 hours. So that's not even on the screen, that's me. So what we will do is I will meet with you, talk through your stranger offer in terms of which guide so you sort of have a jump start when you get into the class. You can use it before class starts or you can use it after class. It's up to you how you want to use that 60 minutes. Um, but I will throw in for those people who sign up for class in the next 24 hours, I will throw in the bonus of you getting a one hour one on one coaching session with me directly. All right. Are there any other questions that we have? So to sign up, you just go to get an NLB three pays and that will get you to the three payments. Make sure I'm not missing any um, questions in, the, in either of the chat rooms. Nope. All right, ladies, as usual, it was a pleasure hosting you this evening. Next, I think Thursday, instead of Wednesday, we're meeting and we're going to be going over ad types. So we are going to be going over the different types. So out of the 15 plus different ad types, which ad types are going to be the ones that you want to focus on so that you get the most bang for your buck. I hope that you guys are enjoying the series. Give me some love. You guys know I love hearts. So let me know if the series is helping you understand Facebook ads better. Again, I wanna give you as much information so you can make a decision to decide to join the class or not. Because again, you know, I want you to jump in with your eyes open and certainly not jump in blindly. All right, get one question. Perfect. Andrea says it is helping her, and, um, and that is always my desire, is to make sure that you guys are getting the information. All right, you're welcome, TT, and you guys have a great rest of your evening. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.